Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 316 on 1st of December 2022. Today's a new month has started and it started with the bang, Nifty making another new high. The US markets took off last night after Fed minutes indicated that the next Fed interest hikes may not be more than half a percent and that has enthused the markets there at least for some time. Recession, however, is looming large. Inflation is not yet under control. But the market's expectations are that it will come under control in the next couple of months and the hawkishness of the Fed will come down. In line with the Western markets, Asian markets opened higher today. Indian markets also were running hard at start but gave up some of the gains by the end. Many sectors, uh, especially the IT sector, were running after NASDAQ stocks ran up last night, but many sectors did not participate today. And we'll see uh, which all did and which all did not. The, t- the topic for the day will, will be, the time. is it time for gold to take off? So we'll look at some very simple gold technical charts. And you can also draw inferences from there for emerging markets, for stocks in general, how to uh, look at stock charts and maybe help in your own uh, ways in which you are investing, where you can overlay the chart inputs uh, that you have uh, over your fundamental analysis in case you do that. So coming back to the uh, sectors of the day, IT sector, as I said, was moving the fastest up uh, 2.4%. PSU banks made a U-turn, plus 2.1%, real estate up 2.2%, metal stocks up 1.5%, commodities up 0.9%. There is also talk of China reopen happening. Uh, But other than these sectors, infra, private banking, pharma, consumption, public sector enterprise, auto, FMCG, energy, all were either sideways or they lost ground. Nifty was up 0.3% along with CNX 200. CNX 500 also nearby, Nifty Next 50 0.4%, small caps also 0.4% and mid cap and small cap index up 0.65%. Weekend investing strategies in general did better. Uh, About five or six strategies were up more than 1% today. Uh, NG 50-50 also up 0.5%, MI 25 up 0.48%, MI all cap up 4.45%. Only India top 10 and NNF 10 did not perform as per the market today. Heat map for the day, you can see all the greens are there at the bottom. So IT stocks, TCS, Wipro, Tech Mahindra, Infosys, HCL Tech all doing well. And uh, in uh, in the other corner, in the other side, you can see steel and cement stocks. So Grassim, Tata Steel, Ultra Semco, GSW, uh, and Dalco all doing all right there. And uh, in the FMCG corner, you can see uh, Levers, Nestle, Britannia, Tata Consumers, ITC, all very flat. Energy stocks flat. Uh, nothing much in the uh, power and the pharma space. Autos after the m- monthly numbers, not very enthusiastic, enth- enthousi- not very enthused with the with the numbers. Uh, banking also with ICICI Bank and Kotak Bank losing ground, not uh, in the pink of health today. Kempla Sanmar is the top gainer in the CNX 500 universe plus 12%, LNT Technologies up 9%, Shilpa and Hudson Agro up 8% and Network 18 also up 8%. On the losing side, Sriram Transport, Mahindra Logistics, NCC, Privy Special and Vijaya Diagnostics all losing between 35 to 4.5%. Uh, some of these stocks like Mahindra Logistics was doing very well till yesterday and may only be a correction in that move up. We have a brand new initiative called WI Daily Insights. So we will hashtag this and release this in the first half of the day every day. Uh, The idea is to have very short, less than a minute, uh, you know, uh, content about the markets, about particular uh, momentum investing concepts but, uh, about behavioral finance, uh, about, uh, you know, the uh, various aspects of uh, how investors should be thinking about the market or dealing with the market or 
any subject that is related to the markets. So this will be a very short uh, one minute bite, one minute daily insight will be released in the first half of the day, uh, will be available on YouTube as well as on Twitter and today's insight you can please go and see. TVS motor charts, TVS motor came out with a result which optically does not look well, uh, but there is a sort of a Diwali issue in terms of uh, last year, numbers were higher in November uh, at 96,000. Uh, we had Diwali in November last year, this year we had it in October, so it could be a difference because of that. But even otherwise, uh, three wheelers are down, two wheeler exports are down and total exports also down. For, considering uh, this current month gone by versus the last year. Uh, but you can see that there was hardly any reaction in the market. So this these uh, results came out during market time and the, act the stock has actually closed above previous days closing. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the BBC principle, Bhav Bhagwan Che, price is God, uh, applies in the market at most times and the market already knows what kind of results are coming. So we've had a month and a half of correction already prior to these results. Uh, so this entire month uh, market has digested what is about to come out and we may not see any fall from here. In fact, I'm expecting uh, some sort of a pickup after this. So uh, again, to 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 re repeat my point about uh, uh, you know, market uh, gets all that information and, and the price uh, discounts it much ahead of what we think will happen. So time for some chart reading. Uh, simple chart reading. I don't claim to be having any serious knowledge about charting, but I, I can do some simple things. And those simple things are good enough if you wish to draw any uh, you can say inference or draw any uh, additional logic from the charts and overlay it on your own studies in at weekend investing you know any of the strategies we don't use any chart patterns because all our strategies are automated and uh, non-discretionary but if you are a discretionary investor or if you are a, a chartist by uh, uh, by uh, your desire and uh, if you if you like to do charts like I like to do charts then you can always look at them and uh, improve improve on your uh, picks and exits using charts so gold made a high of 2050 in March 22 and since then it has been falling so it made a low here at about uh, 1890 end of March and then it made a higher high sorry a lower high than than the previous highest point so we'll call it a lower high and then it broke down below this uh, low that we had touched in march when it crashed in april here so it was making a lower low as it was going down so it confirmed that this trend earlier trend of higher highs higher lows had now morphed into a lower lows lower lower highs lower low uh, uh, pattern and it went and made a lower low at 1785 somewhere here then it made a lower high at 1880 then it went came down and made a lower low at 1680 lower high here lower low here at 1620 and then a lower high at 1730 now also this line should have been extended here it, it, come this trend line it has been defining sort of the the range in which we are sitting and you can see here once it started to come below this 17 uh, 30 uh, lower high at this point 16 20 either it could have broken down into a new lower low but it did not and it bounced exactly from the previous lower low so it made a double bottom here uh, could have gone straight up but it did not it came back and retested that bottom uh, and it was actually a triple bottom at 1620 odd and then it started to rise and this first high that it took out at about 1678 here this short line here was the first breakout on the higher side since uh, march 2022 and uh, if you uh, if you see minutely 
this this breakout also had a small uh, retest on the trend line on this sloping trend line and then it took off again so these daily candles three big daily candles uh, with high velocity kind of show that you know it, gold wants to move away from this uh, congestion triple bottom zone very very quickly and it also broke out of this previous lower high so it was going for a new higher high and uh, this was a sort of a reconfirmation or a re, a, a re, another breakout uh, from this range and once this two uh, uh, the, the the lower high had broken out your natural target would have been about 100 points the 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 uh, the uh, width of this channel here and uh, you would have assumed that it would be going to about 1830 odd on this but it got it made a higher high but then it 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 made a resistance here at this neckline here and came down and retested this lower high line if you see so it has been a very beautiful perfect sort of uh, formation and currently uh, it is just at 1780 just few points below this neckline and once if this neckline gets taken out so i'm adding an if there because i have any chartist can only look at probabilities or the likelihood of something happening uh so the the two the two likelihoods of things happening here are we break 1785 or whatever this level is and we shoot up to 1950 1960 because this this head and shoulder inverse head and shoulders pattern is very very strong that is one possibility the other possibility is that we break down and we break this 1728 level in that case we will go very very rapidly to 1620 so these are the two uh, possibilities i am seeing we are going to 1960 that is my bias or we are going to 1620 which is the contra bias uh, so this is somewhat uh, if if you use this simple dow theory if you use this simple mechanisms on any chart on daily chart weekly chart monthly chart hourly chart you will find that your your probability of winning will improve if you found something some stock that you want to buy but it is not yet in the buy zone as per simple charting then you can wait at least so you know you can use the best of fundamental and technical worlds if you learn some of these techniques and i'm not saying this will work all the time nothing does but the probability is very very high that you will do uh, better if you use an overlay like this over your charts and of course you'll have to also do position sizing and risk management alongside so this was on gold and also uh, just a sort of a brief background on this uh, so we have been studying gold and the uh, equity uh, correlations uh, in 2008 when the gfc happened nifty was down over this period uh, at about 46% uh, total drop for 65% uh, gold was up 61% in that period in 2011 nifty was very flat over a 12 month period or in rather two year period gold in the same period was up 40% uh, in 2015 16 nifty was down 18% gold was up 16% and uh, in the in, uh, very recent covid crash nifty went down in this period of study 23% versus gold was up 28% so you can see there's a very nice complementarity the gold provides a very good hedge it is a great uh, sort of a insurance to your uh, inr exposure so not just your equity exposure but to your overall inr exposure what if our currency goes for a toss some day uh, right now there are no uh, chances of that happening but uh, that is something that also uh, is the is the is the reason why people hold gold because that is the only non inr asset that you can have which is globally priced uh, so we have included this uh, magical asset class into our equity portfolio in mi evergreen where we combine the 20 strongest cnx 200 stocks along with 25% exposure to gold through an through a etf so you have 75% exposure to uh, cnx 200 universe and you have 25% exposure to 
to gold and you can see the performance here in this current financial year uh, mi evergreen is up 14 percent cnx 200 the underlying index is up 7.6 percent since 2016 cnx 200 is up 14.2 percent cagr mi evergreen had it been running since then would have been up 20.7 percent max drawdown on cnx 200 is 38.2 percent happened in the covid crash mi evergreen it would have been only 19.08 percent so romad ratio uh, uh, the ratio over returns to uh, to drawdown uh, would have been 0 0.37 on cnx 200 and 1.09 on mi evergreen so very very good improvement over the romad ratio and you can see in the last 12 months uh, mi evergreen is up about 17 percent with cnx 200 up about nine percent so amazing amazing portfolio is one of my favorite portfolios because it gives you this automated hedge and a uh, and a cover in times of distress which can come anytime right now of course with markets at all time high i am not expecting any trouble anytime soon but you have to always plan ahead uh, so this is all i had for today's uh, session i hope you're enjoying these daily bites and now i hope you will also enjoy the daily insights uh, thank you so much for your time thank you so much for giving your feedback thank you so much for liking this channel if you haven't please do give us a like uh, Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel and my only one request which I do every day is please share this with at least one friend, one relative, one family member of yours so that everybody can get access to some content which they can use in their investing journey. Thanks. Bye.